really leave high school a winner. I had braces for all four years. I was in a mediocre, non-partying group of girls. And when it came time for the prom, well, I had to ask nine guys to the prom before one finally agreed to go with me. As long as I paid for his tux. <laughs> Because when I started college, things were actually looking up for me. I already knew a handful of other incoming freshmen from various science camps. So I already had friends on the very first day. A couple weeks later, I got into the dopest hip-hop dance group on campus. Boom shaka! <laughs> and I got my nose pierced. What? So by the end of fall quarter, I kind of had this cool image thing starting to happen. All I had left to do was get into a cool sorority, and then I'd be set. I would win college. <laughs> now, my goal was to get into one of the top three sororities, the Waspy sorority, the Slutty sorority, or the Blondie sorority. Waspy because I heard you got a pair of Uggs as a pledge gift. <laughs> Slutty because I was a virgin and I really needed not to be. And Blondie because I had always dreamt of one day becoming the Indian L. Woods. Yeah. Now, Rush at Northwestern was a very structured process with several rounds of organized house parties at every sorority where we would basically have to flirt with the members to get them to invite us back to the next round and validate our entire existence. <laughs> now, it had taken me a good six years of watching rom-coms, but I had totally mastered the fake laugh. <laughs> and the, I'm very interested in what you have to say nod. So by the end of round one, I totally knew I had made the perfect first impression. So I went back to the dorm and I was pumped. I wanted to go out and celebrate. But all of the other girls on my floor went straight to bed to rest up for round two. Except for my two best friends, Dana and Gooch. <laughs> to be fair, Gooch's real name is Ann Gooch, but why would you call someone Ann when you could call them Gooch? <laughs> Anyways, they were the only two girls on our floor who decided not to rush. So while we were all brown-nosing bitches, they were in the boys' rooms drinking whiskey. So clearly, they were cool enough without a sisterhood. Now, Dana and Gooch were going out, so I went out with them. We went to some random house party and got heinously wasted. When I woke up the next morning, I had no idea what had happened to me the night before. My pants were lying on the floor, and they smelled like urine, so I at least knew I had peed my pants at some point. But, but what I didn't know was why there is a giant silver ball earring stuck into my nose where my tiny little nose stud used to be. So I went running around the dorm asking anyone and everyone if they knew what the, ha what the hell happened to me the night before. And what I was told from various sources was that my nose stud had fallen out at the party and no one could find it. So when I got home, I asked a girl to stick in the earring so that the piercing wouldn't close up. Now, I have to say, that is some sound logic for a blacked out 18 year old. <laughs> but the problem now was that I only had like 20 minutes until the start of round two and my face looked like a Christmas tree with one tacky ass ornament stuck on it. So I tried to take the earring out, but I was still pretty drunk, so I couldn't. And, and then I thought, you know, fuck it. Like, I did good enough at round one, and I don't know, maybe my crazy drunken adventure would make me look good to these sorority girls. So I left the earring in and went out to meet my brush coordinator, and when she handed me my callback list, I was surprised. Neither Waspy nor Blondie had called me back. But Slutty did, as did four other houses. So instead of going straight to the slutty party, 
I decided to go to the other parties first to load up on carbs and nurse away my hangover. But I ended up passing out on the floor of the future <laughs> soccer mom's house. It wasn't until I got woken up by a bowl of wheat thins getting passed around that, that I realized I only had like 30 minutes left to make an appearance at Slutty. So I jumped up, said, I gotta go, and booked it out of the house. When I finally got to Slutty, I tracked down one of the members I had talked to during round one, this skinny brunette wearing a wife beater and a backwards upside down visor. <laughs> I, I started to tell her about my crazy drunken adventure, but she just passed me off to another member, who then passed me off to another member, and I just kept getting passed around until it was time to leave, and all I had done was reintroduce myself to sluts while they stared at my face in disgust and or horror. So when I left, I, I knew it. I had completely failed. Two days later, all the rushers were sent cards with the Greek letters on them that would determine their social standing for the rest of their lives. <laughs> Most of the girls are celebrating because they got the house of their choice, but some of the girls are crying because they got a house that they didn't want or no house at all. And as I held my little white envelope in my hand, I just knew that I was going to be one of those crying girls. I was gonna get stuck in the bookish prude sorority. I, I would have to explain to my children, no, mommy doesn't know how to bong a beer. And I would never become the Indian L. Woods. So I just took a deep breath and I ripped the card open and there written in pretty blue ink, it said, Delta Gamma. The sassy Jappy sorority. <laughs> in my top three, but it was still a very popular house, typically ranked number four by the frats. So I got to celebrate with all of the other non-crying freshman girls. I ran to the DG house with all the other DG pledges, hugging strange girls like they were already my best friends. And then I found my cousin, who was a sophomore member of DG. And after joking about how we were no longer just cousins, we were now sisters. <laughs> I, I cried to her, telling her how stressed I had been, how scared I was that I wasn't going to get into a house. And then she told me that on the last night of rush, members who had a close friend or relative rushing could stand up in front of the entire sorority and basically beg them to take her. <laughs> and luckily for me, that's what my cousin did. So that's how I got in. Part luck and part pity. Now, even though it was luck that got me into the sorority, it was up to me to make myself fit into it. And I tried, you guys. I really tried. I, I went to the Mai Tai parties. I, I made out with Jewy frat guys. I wore sweatpants that said D and G on each butt cheek. But it just never felt right. It, it never felt like I actually belonged there. And I didn't want to be a part of something that I lucked into. I wanted to be a part of something that I got for being me, the, the real me, complete with flaws and mistakes and uncontrollable ping sometimes. <laughs> so senior year, instead of moving into the sorority house, I deactivated my membership and moved into a house with my real sisterhood, the better DG, Dana and Gooch. And we so won college. <laughs>